Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another Spirit Review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Isla single malt whiskeys that are not coming to us directly from the distillery. Uh, one is the Kirkland Isla single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, this is again Costco brand, so if you're fortunate enough to live in a state where Costco is able to sell liquor inside their stores, you'll be able to see this. You'll see the sherried single, uh, what is it, the space side uh, Sherry 19 years what they have right now price points gone up on that by the way it's about $90 right now compared to the 24 23 22 going back to the 20 that were roughly hanging around 70 60 dollar price point uh, but we've been seeing prices go up so this Isla single malt scotch whiskey is retail price at around $60 $59 uh, it is 100 proof it does again let us know it's at least from Isla uh, it's got pretty nice color. It does not have an age statement. But I wanted to do this side by side with the Porta Skeg uh, 110 proof. Because even though this is, you know, 10 proof higher, it is widely pretty much known that this is Colila. And so I wanted to taste these side by side to see if I get similarities. All right. And that's the reason I'm doing this. Retail pricing on this bottle, I want to say was like $70, if I remember correctly, for this one. Might have been a little more, but... Anyway, that's where that is and why I'm doing this one. But we're going to start with our first impressions with the Kirkland Isla Single Malt at 100 proof. On the nose. Oof, nice. Huh. All right. It's very good combination of a very clean peat. Good amount of brininess some youth there's some characteristics of lagavulin in here to be honest that little bitty slight ashiness to the creus the to the peat as it's and there's a little bit of a lemon oil and that can be reminiscent sometimes of some of their releases but good plums Maybe a little baked apple in here. A little doughiness. A little hint of that overripe banana, maybe. Or banana, you know what this is? It's banana nut bread. That's what it is on the nose. Very, very nice. But the brine is definitely coming through. Okay. To the Eskeg 110. Ooh, much more candied butterscotch tone here. Butterscotch, very sweet. Wow, that is sweet. Now, I will say, I did pick up this bottle. This was about a year ago, maybe a little touch over, actually. But I have, how you know, I have gassed it. I, I know it hit a point where I actually kind of liked it, so I kind of started gassing it there, but. Much more butterscotch. The peat on this one doesn't head into ash. It actually stays a little meaty here. There's a little bit of pipe tobacco, vanilla pipe tobacco here. Little figs and dates in with a little plumminess. A little bit of lemon oil in here as well. It's lacking the banana. A very, very nice nose. Much more smoke out here. Um, yeah, it's kind of... I mean, there's some tones that kind of, I mind you, have a little bit of a Kilhoman. But this very easily could be Kolila. Just a little younger than this one. Because I think I remember this one, they came out with a 16... Then I want to say they they do a 10, but I remember thinking this was probably about a 9-year-old. And then here, this one may be about 7. But let's taste it and we'll see if we catch any similarities. Mm. That's really well done. Medium, medium, high. Yeah, above medium viscosity.
it's sweet, but almost like a, a syrupy sweet element to it. Not necessarily brown sugar, not necessarily caramel. Just like a, almost like a corn syrup sweetness. You get hit with that big kind of baked plums. You get hit with that lemon oil, that big, slightly sooty, slightly ashy peat smoke. That little, uh, that little saltiness is in there as well, that brine coming through. When you chew on it, you pick up the doughiness, that banana nut bread thing. It's on the palate. But to me, it's the, the peat and the lemon oil that are really kind of running a little stronger than everybody. But I do like it. I do. That's a really nice drinker. At only $60... Really, really well done. Yeah. Straightforward. It's not too wild in any direction. There is a little bit of a floralness to this. Not in a bad way, not super vibrant, but it does remind me a little bit of a... There's a perfumey element to it as well, to the peat. The way everything, the citrus, and the way everything's kind of just wrapped up all in one. It's very, very nice. Definitely not bone or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. It's not that. Because that, I'm really, I'm actually pretty good at picking out the bone more when it gets that floral tone. That's not it. But could definitely be Kalila. Could be Lagavulin. I'm not sure if they're selling to Kirkland or not, but who knows? Maybe a young one. Yeah, it's possible, I guess. Although it doesn't necessarily hit like that first eight-year-old log. The 200th anniversary eight-year that they did was really good. It doesn't necessarily taste like that. Hmm. Let me see here. You know what? We're going to go off script. Right? Yeah, like there's ever a script. All right. Did a little rearranging, uh, but I got the log of an eight out. Much, much lighter than both of those. We're going to check the nose on it. Again, this is the 200th anniversary Log 8. This is not the current one that we see out. And I will say the anniversary 8-year-old Lagavulin was better than the current 8. Very lemon oil. A little bit of a rose petal. Almost... Almost lilac, um, but big, clean peat. A little bit of sourness in here. Soured uh, in the malt realm kind of thing. It's uh, malt heavy. A little pepper, cracked pepper in here. Good balance of brine and smoke. Medium high viscosity, big caramel, syrupy sweet it does carry that similar similarity here, but the rich citrus oil, not just lemon. There's a little bit of like a mandarin orange in there with it. Oh, there's now on the peat on this one, you start getting into earthy tones damp forest floor type element in the smoke. Uh, oyster shells in this one. It's so creamy and sweet and rich. That pepper tone comes through on the palate, but it's not out of line. It's not offensive. And then at the finish is where you get into that earthiness, and it just really kind of draws everything out, elongates the whole thing. So after tasting that, and you go back to the Kirkland, it's definitely not that. Yeah, it's definitely not that. It doesn't have that kind of real sea minerality that this one was having with the oyster shells. This doesn't have that. It's got the the little plum, the little banana, that good uh, peat smoke. It's a drinker and a half.
for the price point of $60. Great, great buy. But very sim simple, straightforward. The doughiness, I wish that wasn't there, but what are you going to do with $60? The Portiskeg 110. Mm. Much richer, much sweeter. I think this is definitely older. It's gotten away from that doughiness. Wow. Starting to get that real brine heavy. It's got a little bit of that, those uh, shore pebble type element to it. A little bit of that wet slate type thing. That's got that going on. Overall, man, these are all great. A lot of the, you know, the Isla blends that you see out or the Isla single malts even put out by independent bottlers are really, really well done typically. So, you know, Isla is still doing some great stuff. So if you see this Kirkland, uh, Isla single malt scotch whiskey out there, price point about $59. Definitely worth picking up at least one if you like, again, smoky peaty scotch. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video review, even with the shuffling and the other bottle I had to grab. Uh, but it's all for education, and it helps you make uh, really good buying choices. And again, I do self-purchase all my bottles. I am not sponsored uh, by any corporations or anybody, so... I am self-funded, so if you want to help me out and join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound, uh, you can help me continue to buy uh, these bottles and give you my unbiased opinion on them. Uh, again, I have my private review library over there. You're going to get bonus videos of reviews that I may not release on YouTube, so there's a lot of benefit to being over there ad-free two weeks early so you can hunt bottles a little quicker than they hit YouTube. But if you're just joining me here on YouTube, greatly appreciate you. Thank you, as always, for leaving all those great comments. I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.